today we're going to look at some simple tennis skills. So these are things that we can do in school, ensuring social distancing and not sharing equipment. All these are things that you can do at home. All you need for the first part is a tennis ball. And then if you want to carry on into, into the second part, then obviously we'll need that tennis racket as well. The first part, we're going to look at some simple tennis ball skills, so some coordination skills. For this, all you need is a tennis ball each. Uh, please ensure that you don't share tennis balls. If someone touches one, obviously make sure it goes away. At the end of each lesson, put the ball in a separate container, make sure they're all cleaned down at the end of each lesson. So, with our tennis ball, all we're going to do is look at some simple coordination skills. So the first coordination skill is simply passing it around your body. So, key stage one, this would be a good one to start with. So, passing it around, changing direction. So, some simple hand coordination going on. Then you can obviously progress that into in between legs, mix it up around the body in between legs. So just getting the children moving from one, one hand to the next. Obviously, using those simple hand and eye coordination skills. So once we've done that, we've looked at it uh, around the body, through the legs, we can look at some simple throwing and catching. So the first one we're going to do is simply one hand to two hand catch. So progressing from throwing from one hand, catching two hands, doesn't go above your head. So one hand into two, you can keep changing which hands that is. Obviously you can get the children moving around so I can move around, throwing and catching. The next step from that is going to be bouncing and catching. So I'm going to drop the ball on the floor, two hands underneath. Now obviously because we're looking at tennis, if it's key stage one, that'll just be a simple throw and catch. Obviously if it's key stage two, we can look at moving that ball a little bit, just like it would do in tennis. We're going to be simply moving forwards and backwards, trying to catch, so moving to the ball, always coming back to our starting position and then starting again. Again, if you find that easy, we can go from one hand to the other, or we can just go straight from one hand into one hand. So key stage one, make it a little bit simpler. Obviously with the ear group and ability, we make it a little bit more difficult. So the next progression with our ball skills is going to look at our reaction, so reacting to the ball. So in tennis, obviously the ball's allowed to bounce once. So obviously with key stage one children, I can put that ball low, so it's reacting either side. Obviously don't worry about the bounce, but the ball is coming forwards and backwards and the children moving side to side. Try and ensure that we always go back to our starting position, which would be the centre of the court. With key stage two, obviously we're going to bounce that high and we want them to react to the ball. So if it's short, We've got to move forwards, obviously come backwards, and left and right. And obviously ensuring that the ball only bounces once. So we're moving our hands towards that ball. So all I need is a flat surface, so a window or a wall or a fence. All I'm going to do is simply push the ball with one hand into my surface. When it reacts, when the ball comes backwards, I've got to react to that ball and get there after it's bounced once. So I'm going to throw it, bounce react so i'm going to move my feet so look at footwork towards the ball and trying to get my hand underneath so react left side so just keep mixing up for a different direction so i've got to react towards the ball it could be a little short one so i've got to get there or it could be a bigger one so i react further back so with your wall all you're going to be doing is pushing it into the wall obviously if you find that easy you can do a little bit more speed pushing it in now, with key stage two, obviously we can look at a volley, so the ball's not allowed to bounce. So when I throw it against the wall, I've got to react and get there before it bounces. So I can push it in and I've got to try and get there a little bit quicker before it's bounced. But still try and get the children moving side to side. So in tennis, I've been working from my left side to my right. So my forehand and backhand is exactly the same with the ball. So I'm pushing it in different directions trying to catch that ball. So give them some time, obviously they find it easy to move a little bit away so they've got to drive into the ball. And again, you can look at that volley so it's higher. Last one is we're going to look at is we're going to try and push it up and catch it at different heights. So get it off our volley, so push it in a little bit higher, we're going to react. Obviously if your wall's high, you can push it up a little bit more, so we'll be in that sort of overhead smash sort of position to try and catch. So your next progression is working off a wall, working on their own, make sure the children aren't sharing the ball. And they're just going to push it in, reacting left and right to catch the ball. The next part of our session is our racket skills. So these are lessons that we can do over two, three weeks. So obviously one week working on our ball skills, obviously the progression of that. And then obviously the next week we can look at our racket skills as well. So 
what we're going to do is look at some simple skills of a racket that we can do with key stage one and with key stage two. So imagine with key stage one, all we want to get the children used to is how we hold the racket. So we look at our V shape, holding the rim down, and I like to call it a frying pan. So we're not allowed to touch the top because it's going to be really hard. We just hold the grip at the bottom. So we get the children used to holding the grip, keeping the racket in different positions. Now, we're going to imagine it's a frying pan because obviously it's for key stage one. And we've got our egg. We're going to put our egg in the frying pan. So we're going to try and balance it in there. So keeping it nice and flat. Obviously, we want to try and make a poached egg. If it falls off, we've got a scrambled egg. And we have another practice. So we can get the children to put it on there. Try and keep the ball on nice and flat. Now, obviously, you can walk around one hand or two, keeping that nice and flat. Again, if it does fall off, just think how it can balance and keep it on. So sort of waist high, keeping our eye on the ball, but watching where we're going and moving around. Now, obviously, if we're doing this in school, make sure that children have got like a cone start on at two metres apart, spreading them out so the children aren't very near each other and keeping that two metre distance. Or if you want to just do it in a straight line so the children are walking forwards and backwards, towards their line so we're not going near each other and that's absolutely fine once you've done that obviously we can look at some simple skills like tap ups or tap downs so all i'm going to do is again hold my racket flat my ball and i'm just going to try and push it up really softly as soon as it stops score just stop and try it again so again keeping that frying pan little pushes up not really big ones because we'll lose control and just some simple control so getting the children used to using their wrists to create some different movements and actions and getting used to the movement of the ball as well. So there are simple tap ups. So that can be a simple key stage one or key stage two. A little bit more difficult is obviously gonna be our tap downs. So we're gonna push the ball into the floor and just use our frying pan over the top or our tennis racket over the top to push it back down. Now if we find that hard, we can just push it down, let it bounce a couple of times. So we take our time, we're not rushing and we're just pushing it into the floor. So we've got tap ups, and we can use different sides of the hands so we get them to spin it over, if that's if they find it really simple, or tap downs. So if, it's, if they're quite good, one after another, they need a little bit of time to practice, allow them time to bounce, get used to that ball, moving, pushing it in. So, once we've done that, again, if we're working in our lines with the children, we can put the ball on the floor. So with key stage one, it's called floor tennis. It gets children used to using that racket and pushing it around. So manipulating the hands for different directions. So if I was in my line, all I'm gonna get them do is sort of push the ball nice and simple using both sides of the racket to my point, turn them around. So I'm using my hand to change direction using both sides of the racket. So I'd be pushing it forward, pushing it back using my back hand or my forehand getting used to. Obviously if we've got some space we can see how fast we can do it, so how many times we get there or back if we want to make it into a competition. The progression of that is again with our wall, I'm going to use this side this time, is simply again on our floor so this is for key stage one or key stage two if we struggle to strike a, a bouncing ball, is on our floor all I'm going to do is a sort of simple forehand technique, so pushing the racket from behind us forwards but this time I'm going to take it along the floor. So with my racket, one side of the racket, open your body out and across your body I'm just going to push the ball into the floor and then try and stop it. Take your time. So it's getting used to that technique of just pushing the ball using the racket. So we're just pushing it in. Obviously the progression of that would then be onto our backhand. So getting them to bring that racket across their body. So we're not swapping hands. We're taking the racket across your body and changing your body position. Again, with a backhand, we can use two hands, so we're just pushing it in, or we can use one hand, so just get back used to pushing across the body in that backhand position. Start again, middle of our body, pushing it across, nice and simple. So the progression of that is to react to the ball, just like we did in the first part of our lesson. So whichever side it comes, so if it's on our left side, our four, forehand if it comes to our back, uh, my right side, it's my back end. So if I'm here, I'm just pushing it in, nice and simple, reacting to the back end, all the forehand, nice and simple, across your body, different directions, 
obviously if you've got more space than me, you move yourself back a little bit so we've got time to react to the ball. Right, the last part of our lesson is a rally, a simple rally. So you're not going to have the children rallying together because obviously they're touching and sharing the ball. So all you need to get is your wall or your flat surface. And all you're going to be looking at, especially for key stage two, is your forehand into the, your flat surface, ball bouncing, reacting to the one bounce, and then trying to keep that going. And obviously we can make that into a competition, seeing how many times. So simply we can just start on our forehand, just bounce it in, reacting to that bounce, so your footwork move into the ball. And obviously we can look at swapping that over to our backhand, so changing our body position, hand across the ball, hands across the racket, sorry, and just down to that end, this is for racket, the ball, so move this one all the back. And then the last one can be simply, whichever way the ball goes, is we react to our forehand and our backhand, seeing how many we can do in a row. Looking at simple forehand and backhand, allowing the ball to bounce once into our surface. So a little rally that can create on their own, simple bit of space with a flat surface. So forehand, backhand, and then making it into competition, seeing how many we can do.